Hi, this is Christopher Bruzo. Welcome back. Today we're here with my 35 Whalen. This is probably my second most used hunting rifle. It's uh, built on a Remington 700 action chambered in 35 Whalen with a Schmidt and Bender Zenith 1.1 to 4 by 24 rifle scope. And this build uh, was done by Hill Country Rifles. And this is almost identical to my 338-06 build. Uh, a slightly different scope. Uh, they cover the, there's a lot of crossover there. And the barrel's an inch shorter and obviously different chambering, but the rifle's set up the same. Um, now, I originally built this to be a moose or any type of bear hunting rifle. Um, two goals of mine in life are uh, I really want to harvest a moose. I put in every year for tags in Maine and Vermont, uh, both are a lottery system. Uh, actually, Vermont hasn't done it for the past couple of years. They haven't given out any moose tags because the, the tick problem is really bad up there, which uh, degrades the, the coat of the moose and not many uh, or a great number of them perish during the winter. Um, so their moose population is not doing too well. But regardless, I still put in for Maine when that's not available. Uh, I've never been pulled. Both are pretty much a once in a lifetime tag. Uh, but I just remember growing up and uh, seeing moose and how, how, in, how massive they are and how dangerous they are, which a lot of people don't really uh, realize unless you live in an area where, where there are moose, but I mean, they're massive, massive animals. And uh, I built this with that in mind. Um, ironically, I am going to be going on an early September black bear hunt uh, this year in Vermont. The population where my former in-laws have a hunting camp, uh, record numbers of black bears up there. Um, and I've always wanted a bear of, of any type. Um, I mean, I, I would love to go to you know, Kodiak Island and, and hunt bear, but that's, that's not feasible right now. So uh, this September, I'll be, I'll be taking a trip up there to hunt black bear and I'm pretty sure I'll be taking this rifle. I might also take my 338 Federal as a backup, uh, which actually runs the same scope as this. There's, there's a lot of crossover there, but this one shoots a heavier bullet quicker. Um, not that there's a big danger of a, a black bear attacking you, but I want to be able to put down any game I shoot without much problem. So this rifle has an interesting story. I purchased it originally intending to, to shoot it stock and it was a 700 Classic in 35 Whalen. The Classic was something Remington put out every year, and each year was a different chambering. Um, and they were kind of a, a premium rifle. They had high, high gloss blued finish, uh, open rifle sights, a beautiful walnut stock, and the, the 700 action. The 35 Whalen was made in 1988, and I purchased this off Gun Broker, uh, I don't know, I bought it in whatever I was building my 338-06 and intended to use it as is. The issue I had with it, it was a beautiful rifle, uh, assembled very well, fit and finish was great, um, but it had a 16 inch twist on the, the barrel, which a lot of people with 35 Whalen, it, for hunting deer, that they're going to shoot 180 grain at a rather high velocity for the, the bore diameter. 
and a, a 16 inch twist is perfectly sufficient for that. I wanted to shoot 250 grain bullets, in particular the Nosler partition, and the 16 inch twist did not stable that. Like if you shot a target at 300 yards, those bullets were tumbling. 100 yards, you didn't see much, but the groups were not good. So this was when uh, I had sent my 338-06 off to be built, and I, I thought it was going to come back rather quickly from, from benchmark barrels. And I originally wanted to have that rifle made by Hill Country Rifles because everything I've bought of theirs is just top-notch spectacular. So I didn't need this one back as quickly, so I sent it off to Hill Country to be built. Um, we d uh, I discussed with Matt uh, Bettersworth the intent of the rifle, the, the specs I wanted, and ironically they, they turned it around. They had a much longer uh, quoted lead time, but in reality they turned it around way quicker than my 338-06 was. Uh, so I had this rifle in my hands uh, before that, even though I sent it out after. Probably should have sent both to them. Uh, anyway, the this is a rifle tour. Uh, I have um, ballistic gel ordered to compare 35 Whalen 338 op six, 30 op six, and the granddaddy of them all, 300 Win Mag in ballistic gel. Because you see a lot of uh, ballistic gel tests, but it's all um, aimed towards self-defense. And I don't necessarily, <laughs> I, I generally shoot game. So I want to see what these different bullets, different bullet constructions, and different velocities do in game. I suspect they're all roughly equal. Regardless, uh, with the tours, we start at the back and move our way forward. So, starting at the butt, uh, we have my preferred Packmeyer recoil pad with a 13 and a half inch length of pull on the stock. Uh, again, if you watch my videos, you'll see a common theme. We have the Triad Tactical stock pack, uh, which holds five rounds in it. And there are little Velcro strips that you build up underneath to get your cheek weld um, ideal. So I, I can lay behind this rifle, pull it up with my eyes closed, get comfortable, and over my eyes, I'm looking directly through the scope. These are great, and this rifle, as configured, weighs 10.3 pounds without the bipod, and that's including the ammo in the stock pack. There are, there are five rounds here, and the 35 Whalen is a fairly large bullet. These are the 250 grain partitions, uh, which I've had good results with, any animals I've shot with them, but these are Lapua 30-06 cases that I neck up to 358, or to accept a 358 diameter bullet. So it's a 30-06 case, and one, one of the criticisms you see about 35 Whalen is this shoulder is rather short. Um, if I were doing this build again, I, well, one, I haven't had an issue with it, but people say you can have issues with head spacing. To get around that, uh, the easiest thing to do is to build a 35 wheel in AI. Um, that gives it a steeper shoulder, uh, a greater angle on the shoulder to head space off from. Uh, I don't know if it's needed. I, I've actually had quite a few 35 Whalen rifles and never had an issue with them, but uh, 
knowing what I know now, I'd probably go with the Ackley improved version. So you get the stock pack. The stock itself is a Macmillan Sporter. Uh, it's an identical sock to what I have on my 300 Win bag, and very similar to what, or identical other than the color, to my 338-06. Um, I really like these stocks. The forend is big enough uh, that it feels good in the hand when you're when you're carrying it, when you're shouldering it, it's a big enough stock where it's not like a mountain stock. You can control it easily. And uh, I mean, as I said, it's over 10 pounds, so you can, you can shoot it fairly well, but uh, it's not like a tactical stock. And I like these. Uh, my 338 Federal, that's a very, very, very similar stock, but it does not have the shadow line cheek piece that the butts out. These do. And the color is McWoody. It's a, a fiberglass stock, and they call it McWoody. The, the, the blended colors they put together resemble a wood stock. It, it, it's absurd how many people think it's a true wood stock when I'm shooting it at the range. People go, oh, that, you know, don't see many people shooting wood stocks anymore. And, well, yeah, you don't, because I'm not. Uh, anyway, uh, this stock has a standard fill, and uh, it was, it came with a sporter, or I ordered it with a sporter profile and hill country fit it. They bed the bottom metal, they bed the action, and fit the stock to the rifle. And the fit and finish on this is, is beautiful. So stock coming up, we have my traditional PTG stainless steel bottom metal. Um, this is just your general BDL bottom metal. But it's not cast aluminum like comes with the Remington. It is machined stainless steel, or as advertising would tell you, billet, which just means it comes from a block of steel. So the trigger is a Timney 510. It is set at two and a quarter pounds. It's generally pretty good for, for hunting. I'm used to shooting a lighter trigger, so for hunting, it's reasonably safe for me. I'm not going to put my trigger, or sorry, my finger on the trigger unless I want to fire it. But we got a Timney 510. It's been reliable. I've hunted with this thing in the rain, and no, no issues. Coming up to the action, because this was originally a 700 Classic. It has a carbon steel action. I typically prefer stainless steel actions, uh, but no issues with this. It's, it's painted uh, Cerakote. It's graphite black Cerakote, so it, it won't rust, but uh, it's a carbon steel action. Trued um, by Hill Country Rifles, who, who built this rifle, and so the bolt has a standard bolt release um, is pretty much original. You've got the original jeweling, as I mentioned, the original bluing up here. The bolt face was shrewd. The lugs are lapped. The bolt handle was timed. The firing pin is a PTG extra power firing pin with a PTG bolt shroud. And it works well. Um, I generally err on the side of caution with the extra power firing pin. It's probably not needed. I started doing it um, when in competition I was shooting a GA Precision 
Crusader, and I I was shooting six five Creedmoor, which factory ammo is very good for that. And sometimes with factory ammo, I would get a misfire. The firing pin would strike the primer, and it would not go off. So I changed to an extra power firing pin, and uh, I do it on everything now. now. You will notice that this has a Badger Ordnance bolt knob on it, which I like. I like the size. This is not the mini one. I like the size of it, and most of my rifles have this, or 700 rifles have this, and most of them follow the angle of the bolt handle. This one is straight, in theory, perpendicular to the bore axis. I actually prefer this. This is the only one I have, um, but I wish all were like this. When I had the rifle built, uh, because this is some, not major collectible, but it's a somewhat collectible firearm, I decided not to to put a bolt knob on it later um, using it in the field I decided yeah who cares everything else has been changed let's let's do it um, a good friend of mine runs blood feather precision in Roanoke Rapids North Carolina uh, it's a gunsmith type 7 manufacturer uh, blood feather precision look them up I believe they're on Facebook I'm not, but they're on Facebook, and uh, he does great work. Uh, he actually has worked on my Axis International and everything. Anyway, he has jigs to do them both in line and, I guess, what I'd call perpendicular. And I, I was up there, and he said, which one do you want? I don't have any like this. So we went with this, and I, I really like it. Um, I mean, not, not enough where I would put a new bolt handle on my other rifles, but I really like this angle. For me, it's just functionally very good. Like, when you're pulling it back, it forms an angle here, which your finger just kind of fits right into your finger, your thumb. Uh, I like it. So... So, coming up, uh, just like my 338 6 because it was built during a similar time, and after the same call to Schmidt and Bender, I opted for a zero MOA scope base. This is the Badger Ordnance M40 scope base. It has two positions for the front ring, two, posi two positions for the rear ring, and it's scalloped or relieved here for top top loading. The screws are number eight screws. So when Hill Country did the action, they trued the scope mounting tapped holes to be true with the bore and receiver and made them larger to be uh, number eight. Above it, we have 0.823 inch Badger Ordnance rings. So you get a steel receiver, steel base, steel rings. Uh, if I can't fit spur on a rifle, I generally love Badger Ordnance, or I should say I trust Badger Ordnance, uh, which is holding a Schmitten Bender 1.1 to 4 by 24 Zenith. Uh, scope and it, this has the FD9 the flash dot number 9 reticle it is similar to a number 8 where you have a daylight bright uh, center illumination actually it's similar to a the A7 where you don't have the wide top band. So you have uh, two thick bands on the side, one on the bottom, and I 
guess, tangent to all of those thick bands is a circle. So you have a larger circle, which would be 14 mils, and a red dot in the center, which I always keep off, but if you were using this during the day as, I don't know, on an air or something, you could you could turn that up and it, on 1.1 power, it functions like a red dot. I don't, I don't like illuminated reticles, but I bought uh, two of these, which the others on my 338 Federal, at a relatively good deal. Uh, they were both demos, and uh, I just bought them not knowing what to put them on. It was a, it was a good price, so I bought them. And I love the Zenith series. It's a simple, uh, reasonable magnification range, and you know you've got your 1.1 to 4, 1 and a half to 6, 3 to 12, and I think 4 to 16. And with like the eight time magnification range scopes, I see a lot of uh, pinholing and stuff um, on the lower magnification range. And these don't have that. These are great scopes. I would feel comfortable hitting an MOA target out to 600 yards with this four power scope. Um, it, that but for quick shooting, like you would have in moose where you're hunting them in cedar, cedar forest or something like that, or potentially uh, bare and thick cover, you pull this up and that round circle just centers your eye on the aiming point. It, it's a fairly quick scope to use, much more, much quicker than uh, my one and a half to six. So that's why this is on here. Uh, yeah. Moving up, we have a benchmark barrel. Uh, Hill Country Rifles, they don't exclusively use uh, benchmark barrels, but uh, they use a lot of them. And they suggest them, trust them, and from my experience, they're exceptional barrels. And the whole reason I built this rifle, this barrel has a 12 inch twist. So it stabilizes 250 gram bullets. I could probably stabilize 300 gram bullets as well. But the 250 partitions, this barrel works great for them. Uh, I hemmed and hawed as to, to how long to go. I don't remember the original barrel it was 22 or 24. But I had settled on my 338.6 being 22, and this being a larger bore, which generally does, it can obtain velocity better with a, a shorter barrel than in comparison to a smaller bore. Uh, I opted for 21 inches. This is a recessed 11 degree crown. I like to see recessed crowns on all of my rifles, in particular hunting rifles, because you generally don't have a, a muzzle device on them. So it's an 11 degree crown, 21 inches. I am shooting, I need, I'm not super happy with the powder I've been using in this, which I am our 4064. But I'm planning on changing powders for this hunting season. Regardless, in the past, I've been shooting 250 grain partitions in the low 2500s, like 2514 to about 2528, uh, depending on temperature when I chronograph, stuff like that. And the one deer I have shot with this was maybe 40, 50 yards. Um, it, it was a doe, it was a mature doe. When I opened her jaw up to look and try to age her, she had very, 
very little teeth left. Uh, this rifle and bullet combination, where I shot her, there was a lot of internal items left on the ground. Bone, a bunch of just tissue, meat, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the exit wound wasn't uh, particularly large. It wasn't like shooting something with a nozzle or ballistic tip, which I've had poor luck with. But the you know a uh, exit wound like that and a insane blood trail, like Niagara Falls of a blood trail. I did not hit her heart. It was a double lung shot, but it did the job. She she ran 25, 30 yards and just keeled over, kicked a few times, and that was it. The reason I was hunting with this that day was it was the day after opening rifle season, and I hunted with my 338 6 on opening day. Climbing out of my tree, I generally put it over my back with a sling coming down a, I use a climbing tree stand and uh, when I jumped out the, the bottom was a little higher or closer to the top uh, than would be ideal and my foot got hung up I went back and the muzzle went into the soft dirt so rather than take the day off and visit the range or walking into my land, which I don't like to do. I don't like to shoot when I'm going in hunting. Rather than confirm zero, I, I took this rifle out. And that's generally when I would use this. It would be my second go-to rifle. So if it rained the day before and everything was just wet and I wanted to spray it down with oil to prevent any rusting, not that Cerakote rusts, but you get chips that that are rust and stuff like that. It's typically when I, I would use it, um, probably got carried 10, 15 times a season. And sometimes I just take it for the fun of it. Uh, it's a, a great rifle. It's fairly accurate, as you'll see in future episodes. And the 338.6, 35 Willen, they do not kick much. Personally, I perceive less recoil with them than I do the 30.6. And I'll be taking this uh, bear, black bear hunting this year. And I am sure if I pull the trigger, it, it will do the job very well. Please like subscribe and share it helps immensely and i truly appreciate you watching until next time enjoy mm -hmm.